In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to calculate a two-way ANOVA by hand, manually, and I'll walk you through it step by step. This tutorial is part of a playlist on two-way ANOVA, and in that playlist, I discuss how to calculate two-way ANOVA, how to interpret the results, and how to calculate it using SPSS and Microsoft Excel. And you can find a link to the playlist right below. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to calculate summer squares for all the variables. And in a subsequent tutorial, I'll teach you how to interpret the results. So I've given an arithmetic test to boys and girls of different ages. Boys and girls of 10-year-olds, boys and girls 11-year-olds, and boys and girls that are 12-year-old. And in the middle is their scores. And I want to determine whether gender or age group, or both gender and age group, impact the test scores. So I have two factors, gender and age, I'm going to look at. I'm going to take my data and I'm going to create three different tables. And this is going to help me work with the data and manipulate the data quite a bit easier. So let me just organize the data. So the first thing I'm going to do is organize it by boys and girls. And I'm going to take the boys data and I'm going to create its own table with that. So I have boys, 10 year olds, and their test scores. And that's just that four, six, and eight from there. Now I have the test scores for the 11 year old boys. And finally, I have the test scores for the 12 year old boys. Now I need a little space. Let me move that over right there. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing except for the girls. Like the boys, I'm going to have three columns of data, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, and 12-year-olds. And then I'll put their test scores in for each appropriate age group. So now I'm going to build a third table. And in the third table, I'm going to have three columns of data by age group and two rows of data by gender, boys and girls. The boys and girls is the first factor, and I'm calling that gender. The second factor I'm calling age group. So I'm going to have two rows of data with three columns in my table. So now I'm going to calculate the means, and the mean for the 10-year-old boys is 6. I'm going to put it in that first spot in the table, boys, 10-year-old. The mean test score for 11-year-old boys is 7. The mean test score for 12-year-old boys is 10. Now I take the average of all the boys, and the average for all boys Average test score for all boys is 7.7. .7. Now I do the same thing for the girls. I take the average test score for 10 year olds, which is 7. Then I take the average test score for 11 year old girls, which is 10. The average test score for 12 year old girls, which is 14. So the average for all the girls turns out to be 10.3. The average test score for all the 10-year-olds, boys and girls both, is 6.5. The average test score for all the 11-year-olds is 8.5. And the average test score for all the 12-year-olds is 12. And the average test score for all the children turns out to be 9. These averages are also called marginal mean, but I'm using the term average. So I calculated the mean value for test scores by different groups, by the 10-year-old boys, 11-year-old boys, 12-year-old boys, and I took the average for all the boys. I took the average for the 10-year-old group, the 11-year-old group, and 12-year-old group for the girls, as well as the total average for all the girls. And then I took the 
grand total average for all the children. I'm going to calculate a lot of summer squares, summer squares of the first factor of gender, then summer squares of the second factor of age, summer squares within, which is error, summer squares between both factors. I'm going to add all these up, and lo and behold, it's going to equal summer squares of the total. I'm actually going to calculate these summer squares, ones with the check marks, and I'll kind of determine, since I know all the others, I'll determine sum of squares of both factors algebraically. That will make more sense when I actually get to that point in the video. Up first is sum of squares of the first factor, gender. So let me put my tables back in, and I'm going to calculate sum of squares of the first factor for gender. I'm going to use the boys average against the boys table and the girls average against the girls table. And then I am going to take the grand total average against both tables. First I'll work with the boys data. I'm going to take the boys scores and I'm going to organize it into one large column. I'm going to use the same boys mean or the same boys average all the way down like that and I'm going to subtract 9, which is the grand mean from each of these values. There's a lot of shorthand notation that goes with a two-way ANOVA, and I'm going to do it the long way. So when you go back in your professor and your books, if they have the shorthand notation and you understand the long way, it's going to make a whole lot more sense. So 7.7 .7 minus 9 is equal to negative 1.3, I square that and equals 1.8. Again, I'm rounding, so don't worry about it. I'm going to do that for each observation for each boy score. And then I'm going to sum those up. And that's going to equal to 16. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing for the girls' scores. I'm going to take the girls' data and organize it into one large column. Then I'm going to copy 10.3 next to each of the girls' test scores. And I'm going to subtract off the grand mean, which is 9. And this is equal to 1.3. I'm going to square it, and that equals also 1.8. Again, I'm rounding. And I do that for each girl test score. Then I sum them up. And lo and behold, this also equals to 16. The sum of squares of the first factor, which is gender, is going to equal to 16 plus 16. And 16 plus 16 is equal to 32. Last time I checked. So that gives me my first factor, which is 32. Now I'm up for sum of squares of the second factor of age. I bring back in my tables. Now, I'm going to take the average values for each of these columns, for each of the age groups, and I'm going to compare it against the grand total mean. So I take the boys' data, make a big column again. So notice I use the appropriate age group average. So I take 9 from this, all of them. I just want to pause for a second and say these calculations aren't difficult in two-way and over. They're cumbersome and they take a lot of time. And if you set it up this way, it makes it a lot easier to calculate it in Microsoft Excel and also a lot easier to understand it. 
So 6.5 minus 9 is equal to negative 2.5. I'm going to square that, and this is equal to 6.3. I repeat that for the next two test scores. 8.5 minus 9 is equal to negative 0.5. I square that, and that's equal to 0 0.25. 12 minus 9 is equal to 3. And I square that, that's equal to 9. I repeat that for the next two values. Now I add everything up. And this all sums to 46.5. Now I do the same thing for the girls' test scores. I organize the data into one big column. And by data, I mean the test scores. And I just repeat what I did before. It's exactly the same. Like that. And when I sum this up, it's going to equal to 46.5 as well. So sum of squares of the second factor of age is equal to 93, which is 46.5 plus 46.5. Again, there's a lot of shorthand notation, but if you can understand what I'm doing the long way, it's going to make it that much easier for you to understand when you see the shorthand notation. And now I'm going to calculate these sum of squares with n, or the error. And like before, I take the boys' data and I organize it into one large column. Now I'm going to take the boys' average test scores by age group. So take 4 minus 6. So it's boys' score minus the mean. 4 minus 6, 6 minus 6, 8 minus 6. I do the same thing with the 11-year-old average test score. I take 6 minus 7, 6 minus 7, and 9 minus 7. And now I finally do this with the 10-year-old average test score. So I have 8 minus 10, 9 minus 10, and 13 minus 10. Now I take 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. I square that. So I take the boy score minus the age mean, and I square it. And this is equal to 4. And I repeat that. 6 minus 6 is equal to 0. I square 0, and that is equal to 0. Let me fill in the rest of the values. I take each individual boy's test score minus the appropriate age mean, and I square those values. I add all those up, and this sums to 28. And now I repeat the same process for all the girls' test scores. I'm just going to use the girls' average scores this time, or their mean. So I take 4 minus 7, which is negative 3, and I square it. So this is the girl's score minus the appropriate age mean squared. And in this case, this is equal to 9. So the next one is 8 minus 7, which is equal to 1. And 1 squared is equal to 1. 9 minus 7 is equal to 2. And 2 squared is equal to 4. The brown 7, that's part of the 11-year-old data. So I take 7 minus 10, which is negative 3. I square it, and this is equal to 9. And I repeat this for all the 11-year-old data. I use 10 for all the 11-year-old data, all the 11-year-old test scores. So 10 minus 10 is 0, and 0 squared is 0. I think you get the hang of this. Hopefully you are. I do the same thing for all the 14-year-old girls' test scores. Now I sum all these up, and this is equal to 40. Let me put back in the boys' test scores, or the 
boys sum of squares with an error. There. So the total sum of squares with n is equal to 68, and that's going to be 28 plus 40. Now I'm going to calculate the sum of squares total, or the total sum of squares. In this case, I'm going to take each test score and compare it against the grand average, which is 9. So I'm going to make one big long column of data. So I have all the test scores lined up. So now I move the 9 over, I hope. So 4 minus the grand mean, which is 9. So 4 minus 9 is equal to negative 5. I square that, and that's equal to 25. So I'm taking the score minus the grand mean and then squaring it. I'll do that again for you. 6 minus 9 is equal to negative 3 squared is equal to 9. I'll just fill in the rest. I'm just taking the individual test score minus the grand mean and squared it. Now I'm going to sum them all up, and this sums to 200. So now, since I know all the sum of squares except sum of squares of both factors, I can use a little algebra and calculate the sum of squares of both factors. So 200 minus 32 minus 93 minus 68 is equal to sum of square of both factors. So I take the total sum of squares, or sum of square total, minus sum of squares of the first factor, minus sum of squares of the second factor, minus sum of squares within, and this is equal to the sum of square of both factors. And it turns out to be 7. So all these sum of squares Sum of squares of the first factor, the second factor, within, both factors, they all total to 200. In this video, I explained how to calculate the sum of squares, and if you made it the whole way, you deserve an award. In the next video, I'm going to talk about and explain how to calculate degrees of freedom, mean square, and F score, and interpret the results. You can find a link to the playlist below or down there. And as always, share the love, share the knowledge, Facebook, Google+, Twitter. You can put questions, comments, like us, like the video, please like me. And don't forget to subscribe.